Yeah, um, I think actually we just saw some recent numbers overnight from China in terms of autos numbers being a little bit weaker than expected. Um, so, you know, I think mostly definitely looking at those EV growth position names rather than the kind of the core, the high end, the SUV um, type position names. We and Karen especially have looked a lot at the uh, technology side of, uh, of EV, of, you know, the replacement cycle from ICE, what have you as well. And we're very concerned about profitability of this brave new world as well. I presume you both are as well. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, despite Tesla reaching new highs in the last week as well, um, there is a lot of excitement around that innovation, but as you say, very conscious of the additional costs that are coming in because of that. And also the supply chain, it's just not established enough yet. No, it's global as well. Growth. So dare I say it, the supply chain which supplies all these wonderful new technologies is international and creates a very large carbon footprint. Can I say something positive about autos? Yep, by all means. <laughs> in the they look great. In this, no, in this line from BMW today, there's a little bit of normality back in it. Slight sales growth in the US, flat in Europe, and solid mainland China. Pick up in China uh, sales, that would be welcome, wouldn't it? Solid. I mean, that's a, that's a decent description after what we've had over 2019 for these German automakers. Yes, that's true. But I think, you know, can they get to that next level? And I think it's a case of, yes, there is growth, but it's going to be subdued. So it's going to be muted, maybe less than people are really hoping for. Do you, either of you own the sector? So we do um, tend to have broad exposures within our portfolio, quite diversified. Uh, but we tend to be more in the, the kind of more supply side rather than the... Okay, fair enough. Yeah, sure. um, yes, so I think uh, uh, from a top-down perspective, I think yes, we uh, we have taken a, uh, after the beating autos got last year, mm -hmm. we went into it from valuation perspective. But I think one point I would mention is on the EV side is I think the biggest bet, and I totally agree with you, the the pure economics of it. I think right now the biggest bet I find is 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 on consumer preferences and how they shift. I think that's the source of the motivation right now when you look into the EV sector. Of course, it has to be at one point reconcile with underlying economics but the big bet is that the consumer preferences are shifting rapidly and drastically and they would not mind paying the extra dollar and that whether that turns out to be true or not I guess we'll have to see. Let's park the auto conversation for a moment and just switch over to airlines because we are seeing very strong trade in Ryanair today double digits now 10% uh, it's been an extraordinary week I think for the airlines weighing up geopolitical risk whether they've got an oil price surge coming into the mix uh, impacting fuel costs uh, routes across uh, certain airspace that's been rerouted that has the potential to drive up the cost base for some of the airlines have investors uh, truly enjoyed the gains from the sector do you think we've got a better year coming in 2020 because demand is going to shore up a little bit so I think um, mostly kind of demand again has been kind of coming down um, though actually in the last week it's mostly been that travel leisure services sectors that seem to be doing well so if people are looking for some more consumer discretionary exposure then the airlines are maybe a good way to go but again you've got the oil price volatility and that's that's the most significant driver for them is Ryanair getting uh, you, you're not looking at individuals I wonder I, I, maybe I can ask you because I don't know is Ryanair getting expensive I mean it's it's had a terrific run it is loved by the sector it's trading at 15 times forward BA as we mentioned yesterday trading at six times forward. We're, we're talking about very heady territory for a good company, well run, all of the above, but you know. Capacity has been taken out in recent years though, hasn't it? We've seen a number of airlines go bust across uh, the European mm. space. I mean, Monarch the rubbish was, was sector one that's of taking gone. capacity out every time prices turn north though, isn't it? As, as, as the industry proponents, including Mr O'Leary, have told us many times. Um, Thomas Cook. <laughs> that's what yeah. Some capacity out. yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. The one other thing is pilot shortage. Um, so their wage costs are going up as well. And yeah. whether we see any of that wage inflation coming through more broadly, the strikes that we had from last year were, you know, those big stoppages, they are very costly for the airlines. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.